Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about creating your project in Blender. And that could be something like a short film, a cool new game idea you might have thought of, or any project that you think might take, you know, some time and effort. And really, it doesn't even have to be a Blender only project. It could be something that you know, you might be using other tools in your pipeline, such as a compositing package or audio mixing program or whatever you have decided that you might need. And one of the reasons I've decided to make a video about this is because from time to time I get questions on how to go about tackling a project in Blender. And also I get requests on contributing to projects in Blender. So this video, it's not really for people who have you know, they put together a production team and they have all the processes planned out and they're well on their way to get their project done. It's really for that one person or, you know, a couple of people who have come up with an idea and it's an idea they consider to be a really good idea. And the thing that happens when a creative person comes up with an idea like this, it pretty much eats away at you and begs to be done. And it won't stop nagging at you until you get the idea out of your head and into some kind of reality. If you have that inspiration and creativity bug, you know exactly what I mean. So there's really no problem with this. It's a good thing unless you have an idea that is so big that you can't possibly do it all yourself, or maybe you can, but it might take forever to complete. So usually what ends up happening is you see someone working on a new project and they got a lot of excitement and energy. And you know, once they realize, the size of the project, that enthusiasm quickly dies off and then the project dies with it. I'm not saying this is always the case, but if you spent some time on the forums in the 3D community, you've probably seen this and you know it to be true. And I'm also speaking from my own experience. Uh, some years ago when I was using Maya, I decided to try something, work on a project that was way, way, you know, I was way in over my head on it. And um, I ended up getting really completely frustrated and I actually dropped 3D modeling for a few years until I, you know, luckily I found Blender and my passion for 3D modeling came back and I got back into it. But even though I look at that experience as, you know, a, really a positive experience because when I came back, I was willing to take the time and actually learn or try to learn the craft instead of trying to jump into everything. Um, I don't want that to happen to you. Hopefully, you know, when you're doing something, you can plan it out and not get so terribly frustrated with it. So with that said, I put together some things that I consider to be a possible plan of getting your project together. Of course, you know, this isn't the official way to do your project or anything, but hopefully maybe you can use some of this stuff as a guideline when you're planning out your own project. So here we go. Uh, first thing, follow your dream, but be realistic. Do you have the skills to achieve your project? And if you don't have the skills, can you obtain them? Or do you have someone that's working with you in the project that does have the skills? How large is your project? Can it be completed this century? Um, this is important because if you don't plan out your project and you don't know all the details, you may find out that you're taking on something that is really a lot bigger than what you thought it was. And then is this idea currently possible using Blender? Is it, is it even something that can be done? Uh, Blender is pretty cool, so probably chances are that it can be done. But again, do you have the skills to, to get it done? And is it possible to do this by yourself or do you have need to have other people on your side in order to accomplish this? And the next thing up, create a detailed plan. And when I say detailed, I mean very detailed. Think about all the steps that you need to complete the project and plan it out and create a realistic schedule, meaning as you plan out things, be you know true to yourself as far as how long the steps will take to get done and who's going to do what. And that brings me to the next thing. If you know if you do get others involved, create that detailed list of who is responsible for doing what. So if you have certain people working on different things, you don't overlap them and end up wasting somebody's time or wasting time within the project. And then is any money needed? You know, a lot of things in Blender are being done for free and that's great. But when you plan out your project, look at all the different steps and see if there's 
any need for any kind of funds. I mean, it could be something like you're going to have a soundtrack and do some music mixing or something like that in your project, and maybe you need some kind of audio software or something like that. And then think about what other resources are needed, and that could be the software or skills that you need to obtain in order to use that software, or even resources as far as people. And then one of the things that not a lot of people think of right off the bat, but legal considerations. And what I mean by that is, I mean, your idea may be completely unique and original, in which case you probably don't have to worry too much about legal considerations. But if you're using somebody else's work or you're making a fan film or something like that, uh, using resources from BlendSwap, make sure you give those people credit and make sure you check into the rights to use what you're using. And I mean, that can even be textures. If you go out on the internet and just grab a texture, you'd be surprised how often if you look where you're grabbing that texture from, that you may not be able to just throw it in the work that you're doing. And then what is your end goal of your project? How do you get it out to the people? And that could be, you know, putting it out on YouTube and letting people watching it. Could be a major motion picture, probably not, but you know, you gotta think about what is your you know final plan for what you're doing. And then next up, don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, think about, can you really do this by yourself? And when you consider bringing other people in, think about, you know, the fact that having somebody else within your project can actually boost your project's creativity exponentially. For example, I like to play around with music. I like to play guitar and try to put together some musical productions. It wasn't until I actually started collaborating with people that I realized what the value of that is. I mean, when other people start contributing things, your production value just goes through the roof. The quality is amazing. So, you know, don't discount bringing other people in because asking for help doesn't mean that you lose creative control of your project. It's your project. So when you bring somebody in, you know, you can have the understanding with them that, you know, you value their input, whatever, but you are the creative driving force. You have a vision in your head of what, what it should be and, and, you know, just have that understanding in the, in the beginning. It doesn't mean you have to give away your creative control. And the last one on that one is kind of a caution. It isn't always easy to find help for your projects. And if you, if you ever tried to do this, then you know exactly what I mean. And the reason for this is, you know, a lot of people have been involved with failed projects because there's so many projects that get started up with this energy and enthusiasm and they kind of peter out and they're gone and, you know, they fail. And that kind of leaves them kind of gun-shy for getting involved with somebody else's project. Then also think about, you know, people have their own project, especially if you're trying to get somebody that is into modeling and animation or camera tracking, whatever it is that, you know, is involved with what you're doing. You try to get somebody that has those same kind of interests. You have to think that they're probably running their own projects as well, or they just don't have time. But, you know, if you want to try to attract other people to your project, you really have to come up with something unique and you have to show them something. You know, if you just go out and say, hey, I have this idea and you talk about the idea, in your head, it's, it's the most amazing idea that, you know, anybody's ever had. But unless you can actually show somebody what you're talking about to bring them on board, you know, you probably won't find a lot of help for it. So the next thing is stay focused and dedicated. You have to think, you know, if you're easily distracted and you're wanting to do something different all the time, you know, the next new thing, you may not always succeed in a long-term endeavor. So you have to kind of think about that. And then you want to create realistic goals about, you know, what will be accomplished and when. And this kind of falls in with your creating a plan and schedule. And then if you find yourself getting discouraged or losing interest, it may be best to take a time out, take a break, come back to it later. And you may find out at the end of that break, that your project may not have been as important to you as what you originally thought. Or, you know, maybe you needed that break and you're coming back and you're, you know, you're full of energy and you're ready to continue. And the last big point is know when to call it quits or at least postpone your project. And I hate to, you know, to say anything about quitting because you don't want to ever quit something that you start. But, you know, if, it's, if you're in over your head and it's not working, you have to kind of realize that and decide what to do from there. But, you know, hopefully by doing some planning ahead of time, you could avoid this part, but, you know, it does happen. 
And then if others were involved with your project, be professional. Admit to them why the project must come to an end and thank them for their time. You know, don't continue to waste their time on working on something that is just not going to work out. And then finally, don't beat yourself up because no doubt you've learned a lot with this experience. Think of it as something positive that will definitely help you out in your future endeavors. Okay, so I hope this helps you out molding that creative idea into reality. And I wish you the best of luck in bringing your own dream to life. So I definitely thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. I hope this helps. Please subscribe, give me some comments, and I'll see you in the next video.